नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स दिस इज मंदार भानुशे फ्रॉम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डिस्टेंस एंड ओपन लर्निंग यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ मुंबई इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट एफ आई बी कॉम मैथमेटिकल एंड स्टैटिस्टिकल टेक्निक्स पेपर यू मस्ट हैव सीन द प्रीवियस वीडियो लेक्चर्स एंड इन केस यू हैव मिस द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स ऑफ यूनिट वन ऑन शेयर्स एंड म्यूचुअल फंड इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स प्लीज लुक एट द लिंक्स ऑफ द प्रीवियस वीडियो लेक्चर्स वॉच दोज बिफोर वी मूव टू द next video lecture topic which is on systematic investment plan as discussed in the previous lecture so in the previous video lecture we have seen mutual funds the mutual fund scheme asset management company and the details about the theoretical details about mutual funds in this video lecture we are going to talk about systematic investment plan sips yes we all have heard about sips this is a very popular word in the mutual fund industry and whenever we talk about mutual funds the first thing which comes to any investor's mind is about sip so what is this sip so sip is a facility which is offered by mutual funds to the investors to invest in a disciplined manner sip facility allows an investor to invest a fixed amount of money at a predefined interval it can be for example every month in a selected mutual fund scheme the fixed amount of money can be as low as rupees 500 a month or rupees 1000 a month whereas the predefined sip intervals can be on a weekly monthly quarterly semi annually or even annual basis by taking the sip route to the investments the investor invest in a time bound manner without too much of worry about the market dynamics over a period of few months an investor gets the benefits of a phenomena which is called as rupee cost averaging method or also the benefit of power of compounding or also the power of compounding let us understand what is this rupee cost averaging method so if nab increases the number of units decreases and if nab decreases the number of units purchased increases so this is the benefit of sib because we are purchasing it per month so as the nab value increases then the number of units which we purchase decreases and as the nab value goes down the number of units purchased increases now this phenomena in an average it helps the investor so on the whole where it lowers the average cost of units because indirectly the investor buys more units when the nav prices are low and he buys less units when the nav prices are high this is called as a rupee cost averaging method let us understand this concept with a simple example which will elaborate this particular thought in this example as you can see on your screen mr sheik keeps rupees 5000 on the 3rd of every month so he is investing per month and the date of investment is the 3rd date of each month and he does this for 4 months and this is how the table shows the investment he is doing per month on the 3rd of every month so in the first month the investment is of rupees 5000 in the second month on the 3rd day it is 5000 third month 5000 and fourth month 5000 for 4 months he is investing 5000 rupees and this is the nav which is changing as you know it changes daily so on the 3rd of every month first month second month third month fourth month you can see the different nav uh, value and based on these nav values as i said the number of units depends upon the nav of that on that particular date so on 3rd of first month it was 109 rupees 109.48 so the number of units purchased in the first month was 45.67 this is again the difference between shares and mutual funds and sips where in case of shares you purchase shares which are whole numbers whereas in mutual funds during the sips we can purchase a fraction a proportion of a unit also so in the first month he purchased 45.67 second month the nav increases to 112 now because the nav has increased here as compared to the previous month you can see the number of units in the second month have gone down so now it is 44.50 units 
again now in the third month the nav has gone down to 108.14 and therefore the number of units purchased in the third month is increased in the fourth month it has again gone down and now you can see the number of units purchased has again gone up it is 47.34 in the fourth month so every month as you can see here the number of units purchased okay are different Cumulatively, in the if you just sum this, the total investment which he has done in the four months is rupees twenty thousand, and the number of units, the total number of units he has purchased in the four months comes out to be one hundred and eighty three point seven five. Now, what is the average price? If we calculate the average price, the total investment is twenty thousand. The number of units purchased is one eighty three point seven five. So, the average price which he gets is one hundred and eight point eighty four. Now, this is a simple calculation. But the interesting thing is further. If Mr. Sheikh would have invested instead of five thousand per month for four months, if he had invested the entire amount of twenty thousand on the third of the first month itself, that is in this month itself, instead of five thousand, if he had purchased twenty thousand rupees directly, thing here, then what would have happened? The NAV in that month was one hundred and nine point four eight, as you can see. And therefore, what is the number of units he would have purchased? He would have purchased number of units 182.68. Whereas, because he is doing a systematic investment plan, 5,000 per month. See the benefit as compared to the units purchased at the end of the fourth month and the units purchased. Sorry, the average price here is 108. That is what I am saying. The number of units is 183.75. Whereas in the case Where he would have invested twenty thousand lump sum in the first month itself, the number of units would be less than compared to SIP. So this is an example which is to make you understand that how the investor at the end of the day may get benefited because of this monthly or a fixed interval investment in the SIPs. We'll do certain more problems and understand this better. Let us look at another example. In this example, Mr. Ajit Patel invested in a SIP of his mutual fund scheme, a fixed sum of rupees ten thousand on fifth of every month for four months. The NAV on these dates on these di four different months is given in the problem: thirty-four point two six, forty-six point one two, thirty-nine point three four, and forty-one point eight five. There is an entry load which is given at the rate of 2.25 percent, which is throughout the period for each month we have to cal calculate. The question here is to find the average price, including the entry load, using the rupee cost averaging method, and it also says to compare the calculation with arithmetic mean of prices. So let us do it, and as the problem says, up to four decimals we have to do it. So this is the first month, second month, and third and fourth. These are the NAVs which are given in the problem already. We are calculating 2.25 percent of the NAV. So, for example, we are calculating the first example. It is 2.25 percent of 34.26, which is 0.7708. These two we add to get the total price. So we add the NAV plus the entry load to get the total price, and now we calculate the number of units purchased based on the total price of that particular month. So ten thousand is what he is investing every month, and this is the price. So ten thousand divided by so this is we get by dividing ten thousand divided by zero point zero three zero eight. So this is a unit which he purchased in the first month, in the second month, in the third month, the fourth month, and this is the total number of units which he has purchased cumulatively, and this is the total price which of the mutual SIP. Now, by rupee cost averaging method, how do we calculate the average price? The average price is calculated by dividing the total amount by the Number of units, total number of units. So total amount he is investing, as we know, ten thousand rupees per month for four months. So the total amount is ten thousand into four, which is forty thousand, and this is divided by total number of units. So total number of units, as you can see, 
we have already added them. The total number of units is 979.8083. So divide 40,000 by 979.9083 to get 40.8243. This is the average price which we get using the rupee cost averaging method. Now this is a statistical way to find the average price. The another simple statistical way is to just find the arithmetic mean of all four prices of each month. So the average, the total price as you can see in this table itself is 165 rupees. This is the total price. Divide this by 4, you get the arithmetic mean of the total price. So if you just do this simple calculation, the arithmetic mean is 41.3013. And if you compare these two by rupee cost averaging method, what is the average price for the investor? 40 rupees, 40.82. Whereas by just simply doing arithmetic mean, it is 41.30. So we can see from this example, this particular problem that the average price by using the rupee cost average method is less as compared to the calculation which we do by finding the arithmetic mean of the prices over the same period. So let us look at another example. So here in this example, we see Mr. Desai invested rupees 5000 on first of every month for 5 months in a SIP of a mutual fund with NAVs respectively for each of the 5 months given in the problem 48.15, 52.83, 41.28, 35.44, I always say that you should read the problem 2-3 times to understand what is given and write down what is given in a proper format so that the next step becomes easy for all of us to understand. Uh, there was no entry load as given in the problem and we have to find the average price. So, this is a problem similar to the previous case with a small difference that now we do not have to calculate the entry load for this particular problem. Mr. Desai paid using the rupee cost averaging method. After 6 months, he sold all his units when NAV was rupees 51.64 with contingent deferred sales charge as 2.25 percent. Find his net gain and we have to do the calculations up to two decimal places. So, let us look at the solution. Again, these are the five months where he has invested on a particular date of each of these five months. The amount also is fixed. It is as you can see 5000 rupees and the NAVs are also given in this problem. So, we have just written down these NAVs here. And of course, the formula to calculate number of units now we all are aware of and we are now, we have now remembered those simple formulas also. Divide this 5000 with 48.15 which is the NAV for the first month. You get the number of units respectively for each of the 5 months. So, you just use simple calculator and you can get these answers immediately with one click on the calculator and this is simple arithmetic not a very difficult thing to do. Now in this table which is there on your screen this is the total number of units he has purchased in the 5 months. This is a total investment which he has done 25,000 rupees and now we are supposed to find the average price. So how do we find the average price? It is again the same problem what we did in the previous case. Just divide the total price or the total investment which is 25,000 divided with the total number of units purchased. So, this is the average price 40.73 and for selling because now he has to sell the in the okay. So, now he has to sell the units what is given in the problem is when he sold after 6 months the NAV was 51.64 and there was a CDSE, contingent deferred sales charge of 2.25 percent. So, let us find out using this. So, let us find out using these two things. So, selling price of each unit is 51.64 is the NAV on that particular date when he told, when he chose to sell and 2.25 percent was the CDSC. So, we have to remove, we have to minus this amount. So, 2.25 percent of 5.51.64. So, we have to just calculate 2.25 percent of 51.64 and whatever this value is, you have to subtract from 51.64. This is the selling price of one unit. 
Now, how many units he has purchased? He has purchased 16, he has 613.82 units. So, this amount multiplied with the selling price of one unit gives us 30,991.77 rupees. Now, what was the initial investment which he has done? 5,000 per month for 5 months. So, 25,000 was his investment. After selling at a particular NAV of the 6 months, 30,991.77 minus the initial investment, you can see he has gained an amount of 5,991.77 rupees. So, as you can see from these three examples which we did, that solving problems on SIPs is not that difficult. The formulas are very simple and they are very less in not many formulas and not very big formulas. Simple formulas like finding the, finding the average price, finding the price using arithmetic mean and all those simple things. So, you just need to know simple arithmetic to do, do these problems. So, now we have come to the end of this video lecture. We have solved few problems. We have also understood the theory of systematic investment plan and the problems based on rupee cost averaging method to find the average prices of the mutual fund which an uh, investor is purchasing and selling. It is time for you to do some activities as always as we did in the previous lectures also. So, just open the study material of our FIBCOM maths and stats paper and these are the two problems for you. Of course, we have also provided with you the final solution. You just need to do the solution on your own. Try it out with the examples which we have done in this video lecture and check whether you get the same solutions or not. Of course, do not forget to put a comment in the video after you solve the problem and you get the correct answer. And as always, like this video, share this video, subscribe to our channel. Till that time, thank you very much.